Hello everyone, this is RaySpace and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox Syncable Space Program 1.12 where I continue the super heavy applications program putting SpaceX's super heavy booster to nefarious uses that will give Elon Musk nightmares. And uh, certainly in this case we have a good contender for that as I have put Venture Star on the side of Super Heavy. Venture Star was an SSTO that was in the works in the 1990s and uh, well it, it itself wasn't in the works. There was a smaller version called the X33 that was being built and they had some problem with the fuel tanks especially the hydrogen tank because it has to be very light it was carbon fiber and uh, well Tori Bruno of ULA, who had worked on the project, said that they probably had that figured out, but unfortunately got its funding cut. But the X33 was a smaller version of this. The Venture Star is a single stage to orbit launcher, so it doesn't really need any boost or anything, it's all on its own. And it has seven aerospike engines in the back. Uh, these weren't on the original, but I have discovered that they are helpful for aerodynamics. Uh, so yeah, uh, we have those things there. But yes, it has seven engines in the back, they're aerospikes, and they burn hydrogen and oxygen in order to get the best payload to orbit. And it carried, well, it was meant to carry 20 tons to low Earth orbit. The question is, if we put it on super heavy, uh, can we get it to the moon? That is what I'm wondering, because we see here that it says we have 13,000 meters per second. We could probably send it to the moon, and we've got 20 tons in the payload bay. Uh, so can we send that 20 tons to the moon? Now, it wouldn't be able to capture around the moon at that point. It'd have to knock the payload out and have the payload do the capture, and then it'll come back and aero break back. That would be the plan. But first, we have to figure out whether we can get to the moon in the first place. So that is tricky. Uh, just getting super heavy off of this is going to be tricky. Now, in order to make this work, we have to have fuel at the top four Venture Stars so the Venture Star can fire its engines without using its own internal fuel yet. Uh, that is a goal here. And, you know, you might wonder why shouldn't we put Venture Star on the top and make it a second, pure second stage? Well, it's because of this, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, unlike the Space Shuttle, Venture Star has serious problems going on the top of Super Heavy. Uh, it's really big in that direction. Uh, so the shuttle is sort of nicer in that respect. Uh, but could we still sort of do it? Maybe? I don't know. Uh, but we're really begging the aerodynamics to be horrible in that situation. So I decided to put it on the side, and if you put it on the side, and we really need its engines to be firing, if we need its engines to be firing, uh, then it needs to be topped off while that's happening. So we're going to have a fuel tank on top, feed it, and then the hot staging ring, when that decouples, it'll take the empty tank off is the goal. It's a pretty heavy empty tank, so probably the pyrotechnics on the hot staging ring will have to be stronger. And maybe they should do that before the boost back, but they sort of keep the engines on. It's complicated, let's face it. Anyway, getting, getting things off is the thing but uh, yeah I'm not going to worry about the super heavy part we're just gonna focus on the venture star part for now I think even though uh, they would hate it I am going to put separatrons on super heavy because I don't want to deal with that <laughs> I don't want to deal with super heavy lingering lingering there the reason that venture star isn't like all the way down is because of the possibility of using the orbital launch platform. Uh, in this case, we're not going to, to save ourselves some complexity, but um, yeah, it was raised up so that it would clear that. And the reason I'm not using the orbital launch platform and Pega's Nifty Tower is because uh, we are going to be firing these engines and it would look weird that, well, these engines were, would be going into the water deluge and all that business, but these would definitely not be. So we'll just leave it plain for now. Okay, and I don't know if we need to fire all those. I don't know if we have the right amount of fuel on top there right now. This, these are all question marks. Now, fuel priority, I put that high, but we need to put this high too. So it'll drain that stuff first before trying to drain the Venture Star itself. I expect that this will be completely drained before we decouple Super Heavy. That's the goal. 
All right. So without further ado, we'll just take it out from Cape Canaveral. Okay, it's uh, still wiggling a bit, even though I added more launch clamps. Uh, I guess it's getting more stable, so I can use time warp. I wanted to get less cloudy here. There we go. Oh, serious wiggles. All right, that's how it looks. Okay, ignition. Ignition. And that's some bounce. Off it goes. We had to wait until the aerospikes spooled up, the raptors spooled up faster. Oh, well, it's draining the oxygen first, obviously, from the top. We will, of course, reserve the propellant in Super Heavy for its presumed return, though I can't rely on that clock because we were wiggling on the pad. Okay, well, Venture Style will be using some of its internal fuel. All that stuff is done. So we could do to make that a little bit larger. The pitch is being maxed out here. Just thrall down because of G-force, but... Uh, okay, well, we have to stop. Ooh, that we need we need more we need more Separatron. Ooh, ooh. Venture Star sure is resilient. Okay, well let, let's just see how it does since it survived. Well, I think it took out the nose landing gear though. But since it survived, let's see how we do. We did try to reserve the fuel in Super Heavy. Probably more than we needed because it was getting wobbly. This is wobbly too. We could maybe turn off some of the engines on Super Heavy at some point. Uh, in order to maintain the balance, I mean. At this point, I'm just seeing exactly how much short we are of having enough to transfer to the moon. Though we would need a little bit more than that uh, in order to actually do the maneuvers to come back. but. There is an imbalance between hydrogen and oxygen here. And I think that's... Hmm. I would expect there to have been extra oxygen, not less oxygen. <laughs> this is confusing. I mean, part of it is because we're feeding propellant from the, from the super heavy side. But Venture Star could have sucked the oxygen from the super heavy. Why would it be short of oxygen? I would expect it to have surplus oxygen because of that. So that's a bit weird. If anything, it should be short hydrogen. It could have still been taking the oxygen from Super Heavy while it was depleting its own hydrogen. So that's a bit weird. I don't think the Delta V reading was right in the first place. Okay, well, we ended up in a weird lopsided orbit, but basically just to get over to the moon at least 700 more and probably we would want even more than that for the margins so that it can come back so let's do some further optimizing but the fuel imbalance probably contributed to our lack of delta v there oh i think the super heavy engines are draining the oxygen from here i need to change the priority on the main tank is the problem Okay, we have stabilized, SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. Well, there goes the stability. Okay, off we go. Alright, getting through max Q here. Okay, well, we'll still need a little bit more up there but for now okay cutting some engines I mean, do want parity between the oxygen here and oxygen here ok 
okay. Try and balance that back out again. Okay, we probably need to reserve the rest in there. Oh, no, don't. Why, why did you light your engines again? Okay, whatever. <laughs> don't blow at me. Okay, it's more or less balanced here, but we could do with some more fuel on the top of that. The one engine that isn't on here is the OMS engines for this. So it doesn't have to use its main engines for everything. Interestingly, I don't think we're doing a whole lot better on the Delta V right now. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, we're pretty balanced up there. I thought I had the right amount at the top because I locked the fuel tanks for Super Heavy and Venture Star and tried to have enough fuel for the time, so I don't know exactly what happened. I mean, the Raptor engines definitely don't use hydrogen. So let's see, let me lock all that. Now, what's the stage time? Oh, it's only 1 minute and 25 seconds. See, I thought it said it was more, but maybe I had something wrong in staging. So that's why we have a problem. We really want... And this, this, these tanks are getting pretty heavy now for Super Heavy. But that's sort of good because then Super Heavy doesn't get too far out. It's sort of bad because we uh, what you got, won't be getting as far out as we would like with uh, Venture Star. Uh, but on the other hand, we are using Venture Star's engines. So we have a pretty good thrust to weight ratio. So putting a lot of stuff at the top. Venture Star itself is a thousand tons. So if you put, we've got 310 tons here and another 171 tons. We're talking about 1,500 tons on Super Heavy. So more than Starship is right now. Yeah, with the throttling, it's tough to figure out exactly. Uh, and we're going to be switching engines off on Super Heavy in this case. So two minutes and five seconds. Let's try for that. That'll give Super Heavy 25 seconds of extra fuel to do the boost back and all. Um, hopefully that'll be enough, we'll have to see. Certainly you can see why this was sort of a question mark situation. So far, we aren't quite getting it. There's other question mark aspects to this, the drag of having Venture Star on the side. Dra uh, you know, Venture Star is physically large, it's a big wedge. So, it's a bit draggy on there. And then the engines have to gimbal to keep the balance, which they normally don't have to do as much of. Interestingly, now we're reading much less Delta V, right? It used to be 13,000, now we're at 11,889. That's not great either. Where did our Delta V go? I've only added fuel to this. It must not have been reading it properly in the first place. Okay, SAS on, throttles up, and go. And go. Probably more launch clamps are necessary. this is a problem with getting to orbit, it's about getting to the moon. We could test the uh, payload capacity. That would be a different thing. Just the payload capacity to Leo. But VentureStar doesn't have a huge cargo bay. Well, there it is. Let's get some engines out. Okay. Getting ready to decouple. Toggling engines and decoupling. I don't know. Oh, right, because I turned off those engines. I accidentally turned on those engines again. Ah, that's why.
I don't want to use that action group again. Whoops. I guess it's nice for it to fly away, but not on the ones that don't gimbal. Okay, how will this do? I've not been super impressed by this stage delta V there. We seem mostly balanced between the hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, shut down. We are in orbit with enough to transfer to the moon according to that. However, we should probably test that. Uh, there's residuals, there's all sorts of things. Now, the moon is... we're not in a great situation to get to the moon right now, but we'll just do an off-plane transfer and try to hit over there. But there is a question about the maximum capacity to low Earth orbit as well. How much can this carry? I mean, in theory, it could rival Starship because it's Hydrolox. But it doesn't have much space in the bay. But then again, Starship doesn't re even have a bay right now. So who knows? Okay, well, that's 2,000 kilometers. And then it also has a fairly good approach to Earth again afterwards. 21 days, though. I don't know if it uh, can control boil off that long. But let's just do the burn to the moon and see how it goes. Right now, there's only tiny, tiny boil off milliliters per second. So there's also use of the propellants for the fuel cell. I'll have to turn that on. Okay, ignition. All the G-force. Okay, anything resembling what we were supposed to be doing? Okay, there we go. An approach to the moon with a free return. Alright. Well. So we've got that part though. I don't know if the Delta V is... The Delta V is definitely not optimal. And I don't know if we've got enough to do the rest, but... Let's just get the vanity shot here. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yes. Venture star to the moon. I'll do some re-entry testing. That's probably going to be a little bit tedious, and I'll probably want to save it and try different altitudes and stuff like that, and I'll report the situation later on. I don't know if I have enough propellant in here to actually do that, or I have to relaunch it with some more and rebalance it a little bit. We also have to test whether we really reserved enough in Super Heavy for it to return. That's another thing. Uh, I've assumed that, but I haven't checked it. So, yes. But, Venture Star and Super Heavy. It's a thing. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.